In this video, we create a BIM model of a residential park consisting of four buildings. Through this example, we present the process of planning multi-story building in the ArchLine XP BIM program. We start BIM modeling with ArchLine XP CAD tools, with which we create the architectural grid, and then continue with parametric BIM objects, such as walls, slabs, foundation, doors, windows and stairs. Each BIM tool has its own style, which contains BIM-related parameters, geometry, materials and other important settings such as layers and classifications. On the plan, we marked the location of the four buildings. We start with the 2D architectural grid. First we specify a certain grid distance, on which we later draw the exterior walls of the building with the wall tool. In the properties dialog of the architectural grid, we can see that the grid can be specified with identical repeating steps, or with different step values horizontally and vertically. In our plan, we use the latter. We will design the walls with the wall tool using the architectural grid. Walls have sets called styles. Each style has a predefined thickness and material assigned to each layer. Wall styles can be single layer or multi layer. We select the just existing two layer wall style. When drawing the walls, we follow the grid points. With the last click, we close the building contour. The walls are connected automatically. Converting from a floor plan to a 3D model view is instant because ArchLine XP always synchronizes the floor plan with 3D views when we create or modify a wall or other BIM object. After drawing the building contour, we continue drawing with the inner load-bearing walls. For this, we chose a one-layer wall style. We zoom in on the starting point of the inner wall and change the position of the reference line of the wall by selecting the right option, then connect the wall. We start the next wall from the midpoint of the outer wall and choose the in the middle option. For the reference line of the third wall, we choose the right option, while for the reference line of the fourth wall, we choose the left option. The program automatically connects the walls. We continue the drawing with 100 mm thick partition walls by choosing the appropriate wall style. The walls are also connected here automatically. At one point the walls intersect. To correct that, all we need to do is to apply X connection. We have finished drawing the walls, here you can see the finished state. We continue the design by drawing the layered slab. Among the slab styles, we can choose different one layer and multi layer slabs. By selecting the entire building, we place the slab under the walls with one click. Now let's display only a part of the model in a new 3D view to see the structure better. The edge of the slab cannot go under the wall insulation layer, so we make an offset of the slab contour back to the wall load bearing layer in one step in the 3D view. Thus, the slab contour is completed. In the next step, we work with the foundation. For this, only the slab layer should be visible. The floor structure of the building has already been specified. So far we have been working on the ground floor. Now let's make the foundation level below it active, but the ground floor remains visible. We set the style of the foundation, its height should be 450 millimeters. We select the closed foundation command and set the thickness to 300 mm. The reference line of the foundation must be set. Follow the slab contour, 
which is one level higher but can be used as a reference. To better see the result in space, we only display the foundation in 3D view. Then we make the load-bearing walls visible by turning on the layer. We also redraw these with the open foundation command. Let's continue the design by placing the doors and windows, which are also BIM parametric objects. Doors can be selected from the design center or from the door styles. In the design center, different types of doors are organized into styles. After placing the door, we can decide the opening direction, possibly change its size, and modify a parameter if we want to see it as open or closed. The parameters of the doors can be changed. Let's start with the three-leaf balcony door. When placing, I have to change the reference point to place it with the left reference point. We specify the distance from the corner, which is 100 millimeters. We will place four of these doors. Continue with the one-leaf balcony door. We specify its distance from the corner and the opening direction. I place the last door on the wall as desired and adjust the distance from the corner and the opening direction afterwards. Windows can also be selected from the design center or from the window styles. Now place the window in 3D by dragging it onto the appropriate wall surface and specifying the distance from the corner point. I place the next window on the wall as desired. I can adjust its distance from the wall afterwards. The doors and windows are ready. Here we can already see all the opening on the ground floor. Let's take a look at our work so far. By selecting a perspective view, let's look at the glass door. Here we can see how to open the door with a little animation. We go a little further towards the staircase and open the other door with a little animation. Let's continue modeling by placing the stair. I can choose different types of stairs or edit individual stairs step by step. Choose the U-shaped staircase shape. Its size is given graphically. The stairs are ready. In the stair calculator, we specify the height to which the stairs reach. This is determined by the level height, which is 3000 millimeters. Any part of the stairs can be edited, so we change the width of the handrail to 1100 millimeters. Now let's draw the walls under the stair. Since these walls are under the stair, the walls are cut by the stair. We continue the work with the placement of the railing. We only put a railing on the left side of the stair. The railing is selected from the railing styles. Let's see how the placed staircase looks like with the railing. 
We want to develop the project into a multi-story building. To do this, we select all elements on the ground floor and copy them to the first floor by copying the level. Here you can copy elements to one level at the same time, or to several levels in one step. In our case, we now only copy the ground floor elements to one level. The staircase cutout is missing on the first floor slab. We will solve this now, but first we will delete the unnecessary walls. After selecting the slab, I enter the location of the slab hole with a rectangle. We continue by editing the first floor model. To do this, we first delete the balcony doors. After that, we modify the facade walls on the floor plan. First we move this wall 3000 mm to the right. Then the other wall is cut with a line, so that the first part can be freely moved downwards by 1400 mm. With the draw as command, we connect the previous two with the same type of wall. The corner point of the slab is moved to the new wall corner point. We place new windows on the 3D view using the create similar command. Then we modify the distance of these windows from the corner. We also add two balcony doors. If necessary, we change the reference point, as we have already seen in the floor plan. This completes the modification of the first floor. Here we can see the finished result. Let's continue the work by creating the section. We set the properties of the section. You can choose a vector or image section. Now let the image be a cross section in a hidden line representation. The thickness of the section lines should be 0.3 millimeters. Next, we draw the cutting line of section A. We specify the direction of the section. We also create section B in the same way. The section drawings are ready. Before we go any further, let's take a closer look at this section. Here we see problems, the load-bearing walls and partitions are on the base concrete instead of the load-bearing layer. Another problem is that the insulation wall layer does not reach the bottom of the slab. Now we turn on the cutaway 3D view. These problems are also clearly visible here. We will solve these now. In the ArchLine XB program, we use a parametric level structure. In the level structure dialog, we see the parameters linked to the level. Here you can set the layer heights of the walls and slabs linked to the level related parameter. On the right side, we see the names of the connection points, and we can adjust their height using the preview image. These connection points can later be assigned to the desired layers in the properties manager of walls and slabs. Now the ground level is the active level. 
let's look at the parameter TS, top of structure. This defines the top of the load-bearing layer. BS, bottom of structure defines the bottom of the load-bearing layer in relation to the zero height of the level. In our case, the BS value, correctly here, is minus 300 millimeters, because the slab is 300 millimeters thick, 200 millimeters concrete, 100 millimeters base concrete. On the other hand, the TS parameter is 0 mm, which is why the walls stand on top of the base concrete. So the TS parameter must be set to minus 100 mm. This will result in the load-bearing layer being exactly the thickness of the base concrete layer lower. Set the TS parameter to minus 100 mm on the first floor as well. In this case, the position of the slabs changes, they are lowered by 100 mm. Reset the relative height of the slab on both levels to 0 mm. First problem is solved, the walls are standing on the load-bearing layer. Now we have to deal with the second problem, the bottom of the wall insulation. Let's look at the layer structure of the outer wall. TS top of structure, is assigned to the bottom of the insulation, this must be changed to BS, bottom of structure, so the insulation will reach the bottom of the slab. The top is well adjusted, it reaches the bottom of the slab on the level above it. Once this is done, the style needs to be modified. The view shows that the insulation of this wall now reaches the bottom of the slab. Let's switch to the full 3D model. It is visible that the other exterior walls also need to be modified. The easiest way to do this is as follows, activate the style manager on the left. Select the wall style and select the command update all instances from the pop-up menu. This completes the modification for all exterior walls. Let's modify the parapet walls on the balconies. Here too instead of TS top of structure, we have to choose BS, bottom of structure. The difference is that the height of the wall is not fixed to a connection point, but given a value, 1000 mm. In this case, the height of the insulation layer must be increased by 200 mm. Thus, its height will be 1200 mm. We change the style. Then in the style manager we choose the update all instances command. We're done with that. All we have to do is rebuild the entire model in 3D, so the surfaces join. We rotate the model around to clearly see all details. We also check the result on the section. The connection points look nice here. Let's continue modeling on the second level, creating the roof terrace. From the first level, only the walls and the floor are copied to the second level. We can easily do this by turning off the layers of the other elements. Select the elements and copy them to the second level. On the second level, I will delete all the openings, since we are creating a roof terrace here. Further adjustments need to be made, such as setting the wall heights to 1000 mm. Now we can see the fully formed roof terrace. Let's go around the building.
we continue the work with the coloring of the building. I select the appropriate color from the design center, materials. I drag it onto the wall surfaces by selecting the tiling as coloring option. We are done with the coloring, here you can see the finished state. Let's rotate the model. Let's continue working with the dimensions. First, let's look at the properties of dimensions. Let's go to the building dimension and set the dimension style. Choose the external wall style. Let's see what parallel dimensions it contains. We will also look at how we designed the window and door dimensions. So it will be appropriate, we will use this style. After that, we will measure all the external walls. Let's take a closer look at the dimensions we've got here. In the next step, we place room stamps. We choose the right style. Just a click with the automatically placement command, and all room stamp are created. There are four apartments on this level. The room names in the first apartment are rewritten to the corresponding ones. In the room property dialog, we set that this room belongs to the first apartment. We will then copy this property to the other rooms of the first apartment. Similar. We will also modify the rooms belonging to the other apartments. We have already completed all the rooms here. We have created four apartments, and now we want to display the rooms belonging to one apartment with the same color. For this we will use color scheme. Color schemes give you the opportunity to display rooms with different colors according to different aspects. For example, we can group them based on their gross or net size. We can also sort them by apartments. In our case, we will mark the rooms belonging to the four apartments and the staircase with different colors. This is done. We repeat the workflow on the first floor in the same way. Let's continue the work in the documentation. Now we temporarily turn off the color scheme representation. To display a node in detail, we can use the callout command. After setting the properties, we specify the part of the floor plan to be highlighted with a rectangle. The callout is created in a new view. The contents of the view can be replaced with a suitable detailed drawing or image.
Here we have chosen an image that represents the structure of this window details. Let's turn on the sections created so far and the cutaway view. These drawings are ready for the documentation. Let's continue the documentation with the elevation views. Let's set the properties of the elevation views. I choose the image representation and create the elevation views. Let's look at one of the views. We are done with the elevation and section views. Let's continue with the preparation of the documentation by preparing the plot layouts. First, select the size of the sheet. This should be an A3 landscape sheet. Enter how many sheets we will place on a print layout, 8 here. Choose the right stamp. After that, the program creates the print layout view with the 8 plan sheets. From the project navigator, drag the drawings one by one onto the plot layout view by selecting the appropriate scale. Here we use a scale of 1 to 100. First we place the floor plans, then the sections, and finally the elevations. Let's continue printing. We will create a print queue where we select the print layout view that contains the eight design sheets. We combine into a single PDF file. Then we need to set the printing parameters of the design sheet, size, A3, landscape, printing scale, one to one, no rotation, centered and specify the PDF file name. By clicking the Apply button, you copy the set parameters to all design sheets. Let's look at the completed documentation. Here I can also change their properties and for example, the printing order. After that, print all the design sheets into a single PDF file. Let's look at the 8 pages. Now let's see how the documentation follow the changes made to the design using a simple example. We will change the deep orange color to light ivory on some surfaces of the facade. We can see that all views in the project have followed the changes. How do the documentation follow the change? The solution is simple, by clicking on the drawing on the plot layout and selecting the refresh all layouts command, the contents will be updated.
Let's look at the result. I want to show you one more change. We turned off the color scheme on the floor plan, but we want to show the apartments in color on the documentation. We can do this by selecting the previously used color scheme style under color scheme in the properties on the design sheet. We are done with that. Let's continue the modeling by creating the environment of the building. We display only the environmental level on the 3D view and fill the finished garden belonging to the building with stairs and fences, but without plants. We display the entire building again, which we rotate around. We place trees and plants from the library. We have already set different perspectives in the perspective dialog. We have saved them and we can switch between them with the arrow on the view. Let's create a photorealistic, rendered image from this view. Here we select the appropriate resolution, it should be full HD. It should be a fairly high quality render, so we choose Q2 setting and choose a background image for it. Let that be the background image and we'll start rendering with that. Setting up the render is easy. Rendering is fast. Easy to learn. The rendering engine uses a progressive rendering method that further refines the generated image at each step. The finished image is saved automatically. We can select another view and render it as well. After rendering is complete, the noise filter denoises the entire scene, eliminates the graininess and blotchiness of the image. We will also save this image. Let's look at the finished pictures. There are four buildings in this residential park, so we need to build three more buildings. Therefore, in the Levels dialog, in the building list, we create three more logical buildings. The level structure of the buildings is the same as the level structure of the first building. The building that is selected is always active. Building 1 is now active. We have already established the location of the other buildings on the plan. We copy the first building to the other building location. Each level of the building is selected, copied, with a given reference point. Now we need to activate the second building and then insert the whole building with the reference point. We see that the first building has become grey, so it is inactive. The second building is the active one, we can continue working on it. Then I change the color on the second building to the appropriate color. The second building has also been completed. Continuing this, we will prepare the third and fourth buildings as well.